After entering an abandoned house, a boy meets a powerful sorcerer who turns him into a superhero, allowing him to take revenge on all the adults who have wronged him. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Zakoman, from 2011. After his parents were eliminated in an accident in the mountains, little Kunal spends his days reading superhero stories and playing basketball with his friends. That is until, on another ordinary day, the monk calls him to say that he has received a letter from Dishraj, the boy's uncle, who owns a school and wants him to study under him. As he is already used to his current life, Kunal tries to ask him to stay, but the monk tells him that Dishraj is his legal guardian and there is nothing he can do. Sad as he is, the boy is forced to move and takes a long journey to his aunt and uncle's house. Despite taking him away from his old home, Dishraj and Rajrani don't seem to like Kunal at all, seeing him as a curse and not letting their son near him. On the first day of school, the boy goes to school where the teacher starts his English lessons, but as he is completely insane, the man writes everything wrong and Kunal starts laughing. When he realizes this, the teacher asks him what he's laughing at and Kunal tries to explain that it's spelled wrong, but the man refuses to admit that a student knows more than he does and punishes the boy in front of the class, telling him never to play the know-it-all again. After class, Kunal leaves and the brothers Aryu and Rani approach him to try and console him, telling him that it's normal for teachers to punish students at this school and that he should avoid drawing attention to himself. Outraged, the boy says that teachers shouldn't be allowed to do this and that they take advantage because they are bigger, promising that one day he will be strong enough to put an end to this injustice. Back at his uncle's house, Kunal realizes how much nobody likes him and spends the next few days practically alone, with only his friends. On his birthday, Aryu and Rani go to visit him and each give him a different present, as well as asking him to leave and play. While playing in the forest, the trio approaches an abandoned house and the friends tell Kunal not to go near it, as the place is inhabited by ghosts. Realizing that the boy doesn't believe any of it, Aryu dares him to go inside and Kunal accepts, without suspecting that something is already watching them. Although his friends are apprehensive, the boy goes into the house and comes out completely unscathed a few minutes later. But just when they think the worst is over, a group of bats flies past them, frightening them and making the three of them run back into the forest. While trying to escape, the trio come across a man with a pickaxe and desperately change direction, shouting that he is a practitioner of black magic and wants to use the children for his spell. The next morning, Dishraj meets with the education officer and forces one of his employees to pose as a member of the royal family, telling him how important his work is to society and encouraging the officer to donate more money. Although the man falls for the scam, the representative of the auditing department is not fooled and says that she has noticed the embezzlement of 6 million rupees from the money the college received from the government, accusing Dishraj of having passed it all on to his personal account. Quite seriously, the woman says she has come for explanations and says that if the money doesn't turn up soon, she will go to the authorities. Afraid of being arrested, Dishraj goes home and talks to his wife about the 7 million rupees his brother left for Kunal. As he won't receive it until he's 21, the two start thinking of a way to get the money and come up with the idea of faking Kunal's elimination. To do this, Dishraj crosses the country with the boy and takes him to the biggest theme park in India. As soon as they arrive at the place, the man does everything he can to get Kunal on one of the rides, but the boy is afraid and says he'll only go if his uncle goes too. With no options left, Dishraj goes to the roller coaster with Kunal, but before the cart leaves, he locks the boy in his seat and leaves the ride in desperation, running to the ferry to escape. After getting off the roller coaster, Kunal runs towards the pier looking for his uncle, but when he gets there, the ferry has already set sail. Far from the boy, Dishraj calls Rajrani and asks her to tell everyone that Kunal has perished in a train accident, preparing his last ceremony while the boy walks the streets of India. Tired and totally lost, the boy takes a break to eat, but the homeless people notice and go up to him to try and take his food. As Kunal struggles to protect his things, a woman named Kitu appears and helps him scare off the men, taking the boy to the warehouse of a theater where she lives. In the village, the healer known as Swamidev, talks to Aryu and the boy tells him that Kunal has entered the haunted house. Obviously the charlatan uses this to his advantage and makes everyone believe that the boy left because he was cursed by ghosts, except for the weirdo in the abandoned house, who watches everything from behind the trees. Back at the warehouse, Kunal and Kitu share their stories and the woman becomes determined to take him back to his uncle's house, unaware that he has abandoned him on purpose. The next morning, Dishraj arrives with the ambulance and everyone in the village gathers for the funeral. In the middle of the ceremony, Dishraj asks for a moment alone with the body and starts celebrating with his wife, revealing that they are only veiling a doll. After the ceremony, Dishraj cremates the doll in front of everyone and very soon receives the check with the 7 million rupees, celebrating with his wife for managing to pay off the debts. 
In the warehouse, Kunal and Kitu decide to leave and end up being spotted by the theater security guard, but they manage to run to the cab and go straight to the train station. When they arrive at the station, Kitu puts the boy in the train and goes out to buy fries for the two of them, but ends up being caught by one of the station employees who takes her into custody. At that moment the train starts to leave and Kunal goes to the door in despair. Seeing the boy, Kitu realizes that he wants to jump and manages to convince him not to do so, saying that he should continue on his own and that they will meet soon. With no options, Kunal stays on the train and then hitchhikes until he reaches the entrance to the village, where a shopkeeper seems startled to see him. Despite this, the boy doesn't notice anything strange and walks towards the city, but is surprised by the rain and has to put on a white windbreaker. Wet from the rain, wearing all white and roller skates, the boy walks the streets as if he were a ghost and everyone who sees him thinks he's a spirit who has come back to haunt them. Desperate, the population runs into their homes to hide, which leaves Kunal very confused unable to understand what is happening. Dishraj's son runs home and tells his father about what he has seen. Afraid of being found out, the man decides to get a knife and promises Rajrani that he will finish the job, but Kunal is at the window and hears everything his uncle has said and runs away in despair. As soon as he sees Kunal snooping around, Dishraj decides to go out to get him, but is interrupted by the locals who show up at the door to tell him about the ghost. Frightened, Kunal runs into the forest and decides to hide in the abandoned house, but when he gets there, he discovers that the crazy pickaxe is living inside. As soon as he realizes the boy's presence, the man tells him to leave and Kunal tries to pretend to be a ghost so that he'll run away, but the adult isn't afraid and throws him out of the house. With nowhere else to go, Kunal says that his uncle wants to take his life and tells him what has just happened, asking to spend the night there and managing to convince the man to accept him. After spending the night trying to figure out what happened, Kunal wakes up early the next morning and starts exploring the house, finding a secret door that leads to the basement. As soon as he arrives at the place, Kunal turns on the lights and realizes that he has ended up in a very different laboratory, which makes him think that the man with the pickaxe is some kind of sorcerer. Noticing how amazed the boy is by his things, the adult arrives and explains that he is a scientist. So none of it is magic, but pure science. While the two talk, the people of the village gather around the house and begin a prayer to expel Kunal's supposed spirit. Curious, the man goes outside to hear what they are saying and decides that this is the perfect opportunity, telling Kunal that the townspeople have spent too long being superstitious and that now they can change that. Wanting the boy's help, the scientist says that together they can take revenge on Dishraj, but the boy doesn't seem to want that and says he has no reason to stay there, so he's going back to live with Kitu. Despite this, Kunal changes his mind as soon as he approaches the window, discovering that his friends are also being deceived and remembering everything the children suffer in the city. Determined to change this, Kunal goes back to the scientist's laboratory and says he will help him, starting an arduous training course while the man prepares a suit to free people from superstition. With everything ready, Kunal decides to become a superhero and names himself Zakoman, and as his first act, he decides to go to his uncle's school to punish the adults who force the children to do their work. To do this, Kunal hides in the trees and destroys parts of Dashraj's statue, which makes the angry employees go into the forest after him. Using science, Zakoman makes it look like he's flying through the fog and manages to scare the adults who flee in desperation, flying after them with his jetpack to frighten them even more. Back at the school, the staff tell everyone that they've been attacked by a ghost and everyone tries to run inside. Just then, Zakoman appears on the roof and introduces himself to everyone, saying that they will soon meet again and disappearing into the mist. At home, Dishraj learns what has happened and immediately realizes that Zakoman is Kunal, but unlike his wife who is afraid of people finding out the truth, the man seems to have something planned to put an end to the boy. In the abandoned house, Kunal and the scientist continue to improve the suit, while in the reformatory, Kitu tries to convince the staff that she is innocent. Exploring the house, Kunal finds a chest containing various documents and discovers that the man is actually Dr. Roy, a renowned scientist who mysteriously disappeared years ago. Confused, Kunal demands explanations and asks why he has never tried to educate the townspeople, but Roy refuses to answer and the boy leaves, saying he no longer wants to help him. Left with no choice, the scientist decides to tell the truth and says that after his success in academia, he decided to return to his homeland to improve people's lives with science. But when he arrived in the village, he found the people being manipulated by Dashraj and Swamidev, who were using the people's faith to steal their money. To deal with the scientist's threat, the two set fire to Roy's house and manipulated the people into not helping him, saying that it was a divine punishment. After losing everything, Roy began to be shunned by people and decided to take refuge in the abandoned house, as everyone thought the place was haunted and never went near it, 
leaving the scientist in peace to continue with his experiments. On hearing the story, Kunal agrees to continue helping him and makes another appearance at the school, writing on the blackboard that Dishraj is a thief. In addition, the two manage to make the desks and tables in one of the rooms fly at Dishraj, which makes everyone even more terrified. When he manages to get his uncle's attention, Kunal uses an amplifier to talk to everyone and accuses Dishraj of embezzling millions of rupees from the school, as well as humiliating the principal in front of his own students. Using a spotlight, Zakoman directs the sunlight and sets Dishraj's suit on fire, causing him to be beaten up by his own employees who try to put out the flames, as well as destroying his statue in the center of the courtyard. Because of this, Zakoman is applauded by the children and becomes a hero to all of them, but the fight is far from over and the students also begin their training to become Zakomans. Even without new appearances, Kunal manages to change the reality at the school and encourages the students to change, making them resist the staff who punish the students for any reason. In shock, the adults go to church where they meet Dishraj and Swamidev who keep trying to manipulate them, saying that Zakoman is a different kind of ghost and that he will need their faith to fight. At that moment, Zakoman makes the microphone move and almost knocks the object out of the charlatan's hands, but he manages to hold on and tells everyone that someone wants to tarnish Dishraj's image, as well as accusing Zakoman of being a practitioner of black magic. Suddenly, the town's clock starts spinning wildly and Swamidev says he has an idea of how to end the curse, saying he will perform a ritual to destroy the dark souls, which makes everyone see him as their savior. When the villains think they've managed to fool the people, the power goes out and Zakoman appears flying in front of everyone, which makes the population run for the door that Roy has closed. Zakoman then throws three paintballs in the direction of Dishraj's group and his boomerang, leaving everyone marked. Desperate, the crowd manages to open the door and start running out, but Zakoman reappears at the top of the church and makes everyone stop, saying that to get rid of him, all they have to do is abandon their fears and superstitions and punish Dishraj and Swamidev. Desperate, the charlatans flee while Zakoman finishes his speech and once again disappears into the mist. After this apparition, the townspeople began to wake up and gradually realized that they had been deceived. In the days that follow, everyone in the village celebrates a festival and Rani is sad that Kunal is no longer with them. Watching everything from the bushes, the boy even tries to get close to his friend, but Roy stops him, saying that if he reveals himself now, their whole plan will be thrown away. Because he is so small, Kunal doesn't understand and says that he wants to live a normal life with Kitu, but Roy doesn't understand his feelings and says that the woman will never come, which makes the boy very upset. Lying in bed, Kunal begins to remember the time he lived with Kitu and is very reflective until he falls asleep, without imagining that the woman has already left the reformatory and is looking for him. At the entrance to the village, Kitu shows the boy's portrait to a shopkeeper and asks if Kunal lives there, but is shocked to discover that he perished weeks ago. Even so, Kitu doesn't give up and asks other people in the village, but they all say the same thing and she has no hope of finding him again. Walking through the forest, Kitu stumbles across Roy who recognizes her almost immediately, but instead of taking her to the boy, he decides to go to Kunal and call him for a training session. Near where the woman is, the scientist extends a trampoline and asks Kunal to jump as high as he can, allowing him to see Kitu during his jumps. Happy to see her again, the boy shouts Kitu's name and runs to her, leaving the woman relieved to learn that he is still alive. Back at the abandoned house, Kunal tells him everything he's experienced since they split up, but instead of thanking the scientist, Kitu tells him that Roy is using the boy for a personal vendetta and that she'll take him away the next morning and send him to his room. As he climbs the stairs, Kunal tries to explain that Roy didn't force him into anything and that he decided to become the Zakoman because he wanted to, in order to change the reality of children suffering at the hands of adults. But Kitu doesn't understand and says he's going mad too, sending the boy to bed. Sad to have to leave like this, Kunal waits for everyone to go to bed and leaves the house for an evening stroll, but is spotted by Dishraj's employees who pass on his location. Unaware of the approaching danger, Kunal goes to Aryu and Rani's house, finally revealing that he hasn't become a ghost. Together with his friends, Kunal walks away and tells them about the argument between Kitu and Roy. He then says that he will leave the next morning, but that he hopes his friends won't forget him and become new Zakamans. After spending the night talking, Kunal decides to go home, but halfway there, he meets Dishraj who appears in a car to run him over. Even on foot, the boy manages to swerve and runs into the woods, but Dishraj doesn't give up and continues to chase him all the way to school. When he arrives at the place, Kunal hides inside the cupboard and Dishraj comes back to look for him. After searching for some time, the man manages to find the boy and begins to squeeze his neck. Even though he's terrified, 
Kunal tries to be strong and says that Zakoman will never perish, kicking his uncle right in the lower parts. While the man writhes in pain, Kunal flees down the corridors and onto the roof, but ends up slipping and hanging from the tiles. About to slip, the boy asks for his uncle's help, who just watches as he falls. After the fall, Dishraj goes to the office, but just as he starts to feel relieved, Zakaman's spirit appears and starts chasing him, appearing everywhere to torment him. Surrounded by several Zakamans, Dishraj gets down on his knees and asks for forgiveness, confessing everything he did to Kunal, from abandoning him in the park to take the money to letting him fall off the roof. After he confesses, the Zakamans take off their masks and reveal that they are actually Kunal's friends. Just then, Roy and Kitu arrive at the school and find Dishraj in a state of shock, as well as Kunal, who despite falling managed to survive. With the boy at risk, they take him home where a doctor says that because of the seriousness of his injuries, they can't transfer him to hospital. Feeling guilty, Roy and Kitu stay by the bedside waiting for the boy to recover. Together with them, everyone in the town gathers around the abandoned house and cheers for Kunal's recovery, especially the children, who call him by the name of Zakoman. Listening to the voices of his friends, Kunal begins to remember the good things he has experienced and finally gets enough energy to wake up, which makes everyone extremely happy. Thanks to Zakaman's strength, the village is finally free of superstition and everyone celebrates his recovery, recognizing him as the hero he really is. With this, Kunal finally feels he has a home, and thanks to his actions, Dishraj is arrested and Swamidev is expelled from the city. After everything was cleared up, the abandoned house was renovated and Roy opened a science school, where he lives with Kunal, Kitu and the other children. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.